Yo, this is Sitano Place. Pokemon Soul Silver. We are ready to go into the Elite Force first round. Double check that I have an items that can be enough. I'm emotionally 10. We need to get some more. So let's go and buy some more stuff. Let's go the potion. I'm gonna buy. I have a lot of money now, so let's just buy. Let's buy 30 more. 30 more hippo potions, you'll have 40 then, more than enough for now. Revive, we have 14, let's buy 6 more, so we have 20 in total. Um, actually, pal, I probably want to buy more, even though we don't really need it right now, but it's very really nice to have. Let's buy 30 more. We're getting a little lot of money in this place, that's gonna be nice. Full heal, let's buy 4 more, so we have 20. A lot of revives, a lot of 5 potions. Full restore max potion is also pretty nice. Let's see, I'm gonna buy a few more full restores. Buy four more full restores we have uh, for emergency needing. You can't buy max revive, luckily, that'll be kinda overpowered. So, are we ready? Let's show up my team. I done a little change to my team because I felt like Scyther needed an evolution, but it's pretty hard to evolve. But I fixed it anyways. I have a Scizor. Scizor is pretty cool. Also learning Metal Claw. Now how do you even get a Scizor in the first place? Do you need two things. One, you need a Metal Coat. And two, you need to trade your side through with someone else to get a, a Scizor in return. I did a little bit of a uh, backdoor trip, should we say. Not never more detail about that. And I fixed myself a Scizor. So again, Metal Coat and trade with a friend or someone else you get our Caesar. So I did that and I got Caesar back. And that's where we have Caesar. Yeah, that's technician ability, which is really nice. So basically what technician does is power up Pokemon's weaker moves. What is a weaker move? A Pokemon weaker move is a Pokemon that has a move that has a power of 60 or below. Yeah. 60 or below the power move will increase by 50%. So, for example, Caesar's uh, Metal Claw has a power of 50. Now, what does that mean? That means that Metal Claw does have power of 50, but when used by Caesar, its power is going to be 75 instead. That will not apply to uh, the Exizor here. For example, it has a power of 80, because Exizor, which I learned at around level 41, um, doesn't have the same gain because it's power of 80, so it doesn't get anything from Technician. Same with Slash, it's 70, so it's gonna keep 70. Full Swipe is gonna have a uh, new power build, I'm gonna have 60 instead of 40, because it's gonna get 40 plus 50%, which is 20, and that is 60 in total. Full Swipe is gonna be doing decent damage now. Metal Claw having 75 power, which is pretty nice. This means Caesar is pretty cool. Also, Caesar, as you can see, is a Bug Steel Dual type. That means Zizor has only one weakness, and that is the fire type, which is devastating for Zizor, taking quadruple damage from fire. But now he is still quadruple resistant to grass, and has like six or seven types that he is resistant to, which makes him even amazing. And the best part about Zizor, though, he is immune to poison, which is pretty nice. The rest of my team is pretty high level 45, 44, 43, 43, 48, 47. And with that, let us go into the first round of the Elite Four. Go talk to this guy on top here to initiate. Once you enter this door, you will be facing one of the Elite Four. Yeah, really tough. You can't exit once you enter. Are you ready? Be courageous and go for it. That's so what this guy just said. Once you go through the door here, there is no turning back unless you were to have all your Pokemon getting knocked out. And you'll be back here again. You have to do all the lead for members again. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take them all in a single time. So let's go inside. And here we have the first opponent, Will, the Psychic Type Master. I like how they changed the um, graphics of uh, Generation 2 Elite Four. You see, it's become like pretty cool here. These boxes flying around. We have this type of purple darkness. Seems like a bit of a psychic type world. And right in front of us stands Will, our first opponent in the Yoto Pokemon League. 
Hello, and welcome to the Pokemon League. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Will. I have trained all around the world, making my Psychic-type Pokemon powerful. And at last, I've been accepted into the Elite Four. I can only keep getting better. Losing is not an option. And here we go, the first Elite Four member is Will, the Psychic-type Master. If you beat him, will be one-fourth of the Elite Four through. His first Pokemon will be Xatu, the Psychic flying type bird, which is the bold warm form of Natu. This one will be interesting. Amphros also learned Single Beam now, which means he can do some good damage against Pokemon weak to Psychic, or will weak to Bug. But that won't be happening to Exalto, because even though Exalto is weak to Bug from being a Psychic type, he's also resistant to Bug from being a flying type. I'll choose this challenge. Exalto will go with me first. I mean, Zatu will be using my move first. With a discharge, doesn't do much damage, but I will do it in return back to Zatu's face. Let's see if Zatu even survives the discharge. It will not. A one in KO on Zatu. Good start there from Ampharos. Our next Pokemon will be Jinx. Jinx is an Ice and Psychic dual type makes it weak to a lot of type of things such as uh, steel types and even weak to other types such as um, darkness. You can use Caesar here against uh, Jinx. You can also use for alligator. I'll go with Caesar actually. Let's get our new Pokemon in action because he has a resistance to both ice and psychic types. Jinx versus Caesar. So we can do now use the Metal Claw for additional damage. You can also use X Scissor for additional damage. Both of them are really good here. Let's do it with a Metal Claw first. It's effective because Metal is breaking down the ice. It's a one-hit KO on Jinx. Well done, Zizor. Your first move takes its first opponent down. Zizor is amazing. Next Pokemon will be Executor. Executor, dual type, grass, and psychic. You know what you're gonna do with that? Yeah, we're gonna stick with Zizor for sure. Because Executor has a whooping four time weakness to bug. So, what do we do? Egg Scissor! That's gonna take care of Executor for sure. Will it survive? No quadruple weakness is gonna take down Executor in a single hit. Scizor is doing so good after his evolution as Hitmochan goes up to level 45. Next up will be Slowbro. Slowbro is dual type water and psychic so you can use electric types, you can also use bug types, dark types, you know it, you can bring it. But for this, I'm gonna go back to Ampharos because Ampharos needs some love as well. Ampharos took down Exato. Let's have Ampharos take care of Slowbro. For Slowbro, I'll go again with a Discharge. All out power on Slowbro. Slowbro is very tanky. He should survive this. Oh, he barely survives! That's so close to a wanted KO. Here comes Slowbro's Curse, which will increase his attack and defense and cost of speed. And that means Will will use a full restore, which means Slowbro goes back to full health. No problem though, I'll just do a discharge again. Let us see if it's enough this time to KO Slowbro, or if we have to do one more move. No, it's still back on a super critical level. I must do it again. But I have faith in my Ampharos. Here comes the second discharge. And Slowbro goes down. We have one more Pokemon to face from Will. That's gonna be another Xatu. We will stick to Ampharos for this against Xatu number 2. Level 42. We psychics don't even give up when we're down to the last Pokemon. That's what makes us so formidable. You can say that again, Will. You do have Citrus Berry on your Xatu, but I'm gonna go with Discharge and finish this. 
before that though, Confused Ray will land them for us, which means I might be hitting myself instead of attacking the opponent. Let us see, what will Amp for us do? He's gonna discharge! He doesn't care! He goes all out! He means business! He is a monster, he's a beast, will it be enough? It will be enough! Exactly can't take it, it's a one-hit KO! And that means Ampharos has taken out three of Will's Pokémon, and this battle is over. I, I, can't, I can't believe it. Oh wow, 10,000. Mm, I love the Amulet Coin. Even though I was defeated, I won't change my course. I will continue battling until I stand above all trainers. Now move on and experience the true ferocity of the Elite Four. Thank you so much, Will. What a great battle we had there. Not Exatu, Slowbro, Executor all fell to two of my Pokémon, and for us, who took down three Pokémon, and our newly evolved Zizor, who demolished Executor and Jinx. And speaking of which, here comes opponent number two. And that is going to be a familiar face. The former gym leader of the Fusa Gym is Koga. Koga has now been promoted from being a gym leader. He has now instead become a fully fledged member of the Elite Four. So kudos to him. This is Super Potion on Ampharos to cure him up to full health. Alright, so Koga is our next opponent. Koga is the master of poison types. He also has some dual types, such as dual pot type poison and uh, bug poison and uh, flying, even some other type of Pokemon too, so this one is going to be tough. This is a Pokemon user who likes to flex status attacks on your Pokemon rather than just doing all that damage. It can be a bit annoying. So let's see, for the first battle here, I think I'll actually start off with Lugia. Lugia is the poison killer with excess, with, uh, excess uh, sensory. It can do a lot of damage to poison types, so I will start off this battle with Lugia. Once you're ready, step forward and talk to Koga to initiate the second of four Elite Four battles. <laughs> I am Koga of Elite Four. I live in shadows, a ninja. My intricate style will confound and destroy you. Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be the victim of my sinister techniques. <laughs> Pokemon are merely a brute force. You should see soon enough. And here we go, the second lead for battle against Koga! The master of the poison types, he will have five Pokemon. Let us see what he has up in his sleeves. The first one will be Ariados, the bold version of Spinarak. This is a bug poison type. Pokemon, which can be a bit of an annoying one. We have multiple ways to take out this Pokemon. We can go with extra sensory for the special attack damage, we can go fly, or we can go all out power with Aeroblast. I'm gonna believe in the psychic, I'm gonna believe in the extra sensory, let's go with that. Sensory on Ariados. Will it survive or will it fall? It's gonna fall! One hit KO on Ariados! And so far, so good for Lugia. Next up will be Fortress. Well, that's a different one. Fortress is not a poison type, it's a dual type bug and steel type. You know what that means? Call the fire department because Flareon is in the house. Being quadruple weakness to fire, Flareon is my choosing against Fortress. Be careful about Fortress though, is that even though it's a bug and steel dual type and having quadruple weakness to fire, it has insane physical defense. And I will try it though with Fire Fang and see how much I'll do to Fortress. Fortress will do Protect, which means it's gonna be immune to damage for one turn. I'll try it again. Here comes the Fire Fang. How much damage will we do to Fortress's heavy defense? It's enough for a one hit KO because of the critical hit. It doesn't matter how high the defense is then. Critical hit super effective. That will take down the Fortress. And we're taking down two of the Pokemon so far from Koga. 
Next up will be Muck. Muck is a pure poison type Pokemon, which means you have to take him hard with either a ground type move or a psychic type move. So Lugia, I want you to come back out. Lugia in to face off against Muck. The pressure is being exerted. I'll go with extra sensory on Muck. Zap that in, Muck. Let's see how we fare against this one. Oh, this one hurts, but Muck survives. Muck with minimize, which means his evading rate is gonna go up, making it harder for me to hit my moves on Muck. Muck also has a black sludge, which means he's gonna use a little health back in the turn. But I'm confident I can do it again. I missed accessory. Gunshot miss as well from Muck. But keep restoring a bit of health to back sludge. I'm gonna go in again with accessory. Will I hit it this time? Reconnect. Will it be enough to KO the big sludge called Muck? Or will we have to do one more turn? No, it's a critical hit. Lugia makes sure that Muck is gonna stay down for good. And we've beaten down Muck. We have two more Pokemon to fight against this amazing trainer. Next up will be Crobat. This was gonna be interesting. Crobat, a dual type, poison and flying type, will stick with Lugia. Crobat, the fully evolved version of Subat, the evolved form of Golbat. This one's gonna be tough, he's pretty strong. But he is a dual type poison flying, so he uses rock attacks, ice attacks, electric attacks, or even psychic attack. Double team from Crobat, which is basically the same thing as a minimize from Muck. Invasion goes up for Crobat. Exactly sensory will hit. And let's see how much damage Crobat will take compared to Muck. That's pretty good. Two thirds of the health done. But Crobat has a citrus berry. It's gonna recover back to half health. It's still gonna be enough with not extra sensory. If I land wing attack. On to Lugia, plus some damage. The sensory hit will connect. Will it be enough to KO the Crobat, or will we have to do another hit? We don't need to. We get it with two hits. Crobat goes down. Now we're down to the final Pokemon from Koga, which is gonna be Venomoth. The evolved form of Venonat, dual type poison and bug. Who should get the honor of killing of this one? Give the honor to Flareon. In with Flareon versus Venomoth. Venomoth, the evolved version of Venonat. One Pokemon left. Haha, <laughs> I've been counting on this one from the very beginning. Oh, yeah, bet you have. I don't really care about that though. I think we should be able to, to go hard on this instead. So, Venomoth has a cool ability called Shield Dust. That means Pokemon moves that has a secondary effect, such as giving a burn, paralyze, reducing stats and everything, those effects will be negated by Venomoth. So, for example, if I use a Body Slam on Venomoth to apply Paralyzes and do normal damage, it will I can do the normal damage, no problem. The Paralyzes effect will never land on Venomoth. Pretty nice ability, I would say. Let's talk more about it, let's go and take it off once and for all with Fire Fang. Venomoth will hit the Toxic on Flareon, which is gonna make me badly poisoned. And that's gonna make things harder if this one goes down quickly. Fire Fang connects. And it's gonna be a one-hit KO on Venomoth. That means there is no more Pokemon for Koga to use. And this battle is over. You have proven your worth. I subject you to everything I could muster, but my forts failed. I must hold my skills. Go on to the next room and put your abilities to the test. Oh, we will for sure, but we'll do that in the next episode because we're taking the care of two of the four lead four members. We have two more to face, and the two will be coming in the next episode. After that, we're gonna go head to head with Elite Four Champion, which is gonna be a very, very impressive opponent. Someone you might even know from before. Someone who is mighty, 
mightier than most, that's for sure. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook, and that's it for now, so I'll see you guys next time as my story of Pokemon Soul Silver continues.